Why isn't hyperparathyroidism diagnosed appropriately and misdiagnosed at times as being something else? Why isn't it diagnosed often enough when people are suffering from it? I'm Dr. Bob Akhler, I'm from Center for Advanced Parathyroid Surgery. That is such an important question, vitally important, and there's many reasons for it. First and foremost is doctor's impression of how common this disease is. In the US, we think it happens in one in 800 people, one in 250 women over the age of 60. In Canada, where they did an osteoporosis study and looked at adults over the age of 30, they discovered that 3.3% of people have normal calcium and high PTH, and 1.4 have high calcium, high PTH, the traditional form. So there's more people who actually have normal calcium and high PTH, right? And they're gonna get completely misdiagnosed because their calciums are normal. And when a primary doctor looks at it, may think, well, calcium's normal, it's not a problem. So we are underestimating the prevalence of this disease completely, all right? It is a very common endocrine problem. The symptoms. You know, there is a consensus group that gets together in international workshop on asymptomatic hyperparathyroidism. What do they mean as asymptomatic? What do they mean when they say that someone doesn't have a symptom? They mean they don't get fractures, low impact fractures, fragility fractures otherwise. They don't pass kidney stones and so they don't have kidney problems, okay? So if you don't have kidney problems, you're not passing kidney stones and you don't get fractures, they consider you asymptomatic. But are those the most common symptoms? Absolutely not. The most common symptom is fatigue. 96% of people who have hyperparathyroidism have fatigue that can be immense, that can be so bad that you don't wanna even get out of bed, right? You lose motivation, you lose, you lose this joy of life, right? And that's very difficult to overcome. And then followed by bone pain and joint pain and muscle aches and pains and fire alarms going on in your head, which really actually happens. You actually have alarms going in your head telling you that there is something wrong. You know it. And most often, patients who have hyperparathyroidism know that something happened to them, life is different, the things that they could do just a few years ago, they're having a really hard time getting done, right? They have concentration issues, memory problems, irritability, sleep issues, nighttime urination, right? Frequent urination, depression and anxiety, headaches, acid problems, uh, uh, constipation, uh, uh, stomach pain and discomfort, incontinence, nausea and vomiting before we even get to bone fractures and kidney stones being passed. So the most common symptoms here that you see on this list, if you walked into a uh, primary doctor's office and you gave them all of these symptoms, I would guarantee that more than 95% of them wouldn't think as hyperparathyroidism as one of the possible reasons why you're feeling like this. And that's a big problem. 5% of the population over the age of 30 has this disease. The symptoms are completely not aligned with what doctors believe to be the symptoms of this disease. Now, the other thing that happens is your calcium level. You'll go get your blood test done, annual blood test, and your doctor says, oh, your calcium is just slightly elevated above normal, right? Your calcium is, in the US, the range of normal is roughly 8.8 .8 to 10.2. It varies a little bit, right? And if your calcium is 10.4, most of the time, your primary doctor will say, all right, maybe you're taking too much Tums for stomach acid, you're taking too many supplements, or you have too much dairy or almonds. Cut down on that, let's check the labs again next year. Check the labs next year again, and your calcium is slightly high again, 10.5. Still not high enough to be alarming to them, right? And so this gets missed over and over again. This study here shows that the level of calcium in your bloodstream does not necessarily correlate with symptoms. Right? So the black line is calciums below 11.2, which is one unit above normal. And the gray bar is for calciums more than one unit above normal. And you can see you don't have more symptoms when your calcium is higher. In fact, a great majority of times when your calcium is a little bit lower, you have more of these symptoms. They are marked with the stars here, right? And the only time you have symptoms that are more common in a higher calcium level is kidney stones. The only time, right? So the calcium level doesn't necessarily correlate with the severity of your symptoms. 
the symptoms you have are not commonly associated with hyperparathyroidism, and this is a common disease. These are the reasons why you are often misdiagnosed because it's just not very clear. And so when you know something's wrong with you, when you have this slew of symptoms, I encourage you to ask your doctor to check your calcium, parathyroid hormone level, and vitamin D levels. Fasting and at eight o'clock in the morning, just, just ask them to do that, the simple blood test, and it has to be fasting so that it's not affected by the time of day or the food you eat, the breakfast you have, and so on, so that you can get an accurate picture of what may be going on. And then once you have those numbers, you can see if there's an imbalance between the calcium and PTH. Now, normally, when your calcium is on the high side of normal, your PTH should be on the low side of normal. And this relation should be inverse of each other, right? So if you get your labs and your calcium is on the high side of normal and your PTH is just a little bit above normal, that's absolutely abnormal, right? So that is a normal calcemic hyperparathyroid state. Your calcium is high normal, your PTH instead of being suppressed is high. And then you have to repeat the lab several times to see if this abnormal relationship continues to exist. And if it does, then you have a version of hyperparathyroidism that is commonly not known by the primary doctors. Hopefully you find this helpful. I, I really do hope that you do so because it can change your life. Um, if you're interested in clear parathyroid information and need help with what to do next, visit us at parathyroid.net. If you enjoy this video and have questions that want answered, leave comments for us, follow us. That way we know what you're interested in and I can, I can answer your questions and I can make other videos to help with this very difficult journey. Be well.